Warning, this video contains scenes of animals being dispatched in the UK using legal limit air rifles. Do not watch if you may be offended. Go and watch Charlie Bit My Finger instead. Morning. It's just the end of February now. Um, managed to get out on the farm finally. I promise it won't take so long next time to get another video out. Um, but it's early, it's only about seven o'clock. Um, I'm out on the farm. With the, I picked up a HW110 in 20 cal. I'm uh, using the PAR 007 um, from Airgun 101 and uh, Hawk Air Max scope. I've just got here and <laughs> just bagged two off the wire straight away. I've got a set, set up in my hedge hide, uh, shooting out at the wires. Um, so this gun's in 20 cal. Uh, which I love um, I bought it as a replacement well, not a replacement, I've still got it um, I keep bringing the rapid to the farm but it's getting a bit bashed about leaning it on tractors and hedges and things like that so um, I decided to take a bit more care of it so I bought something a bit more dispensable which is uh, the HW110 it's a special order in 20 cal I didn't buy it new um, but I think you can still get it in 20 cal but I, say it's, I think it's, a, it's an extra uh, about £130 I think as an extra order um, the build one to spec I think I don't think they're off the shelf um, so I'm using the pod 007 on it which lets me shoot through the crosshairs um, cracking bit of kit actually really impressed with it but what I will say is if you get one get the Eagle Vision mount for it um, absolutely superb bit of kit should really come with something like this it's just it's a game changer um, it's no more messing about with those um, like metal scope clamp things. You just screw this on. I'll put a link below um, to Andy's video, AM Bushcraft and Hunting. He did a video showing how to fit it and how it all works and everything. Um, he's got a brilliant channel, doing really well. So I'll put a link to that below and you can see how it all goes on. Um, a shout out to my mate Steve at HW100 Tuning. Who's fitted me a titanium cylinder to the, to the gun? Done a full service, removed the anti tamper, put a new hammer spring in, set it 11.4 foot pounds with the 13 grain JSBs. Um, shoots really sweet now, it's very, very accurate, really accurate gun. Um, it's got a Viroc XLK moderator on. So it's a not cracking little gun, actually, really. I mean, with a titanium cylinder, it's, it's sort of just just over half the weight of the steel cylinder gives you an extra 20 shots so um, it's well worth fitting um, I'll put a link down below in the description to his um, or not in the description at the bottom of the screen uh, so I get told off by YouTube um, but I'll put a link at the bottom of the screen now to the to his website there's all sorts of bits and pieces you've got a Viroc or sells all sorts of cylinders titanium cylinders and all sorts of kits well worth uh, visiting so, okay, let's crack on. I've already bagged a couple. I might have to go out and pick them up because they get upset. So, okay, I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Well, these are the first two I got when I've got there. Um, I just barely got set up and one landed. I was sat there for quite a while, quite content. So, obligingly let me get set up and uh, taken. Now I'd have to excuse the slightly skew nature of the crosshairs. I didn't realise until I played the video back that they were just slightly off. I must have knocked the pod while I was putting it on or scrambling through the hedge. Um, obviously the gun's the right way, but um, the pod just looking at the crosshairs slightly skew. Um, but I'll make sure that's right next time. I never even noticed to be honest when I was shooting because obviously I hold the gun square. So that was the first two. And then sit there for a little while. I'm just about to pull the trigger, and this one flies round, but he only goes a few meters and lands again on the other wire. And because I'm shooting up, I don't want to shoot him from behind whilst shooting upward. Um, this one's barking at the ones on the floor that I've not picked up yet. I always like to have them face on to me when I'm shooting upward. Um, so. I don't want to really put a pellet on the backside. That's better. Go for the chest shot. Down it goes. 
the rooks don't seem that bothered. They're not as don't seem as bothered as the crows. Because that one there has not moved even though its friend's just gone down. Which helps me. So he joins him. So then I did go and pick them up. And then about 45 minutes later, spot this bloke. Mangy looking fox. Now I was hoping, and it turned out to actually be true, that um, it would cause the uh, crows to get a bit wound up because they hate foxes. Looks like he's having some real trouble there with uh, trying to reach his sore back. Looks in a right state. I mean, this was about, I don't know, probably about half past eight, eight o'clock in the morning. So he's obviously had a bad night. Um, is it? I think it's mange. I'm not sure. Obviously, I'm not going to shoot him with an air rifle. But um, I thought I'll leave him there because eventually, well, a few minutes later, it happened exactly how I wanted it to. This crow spotted the fox, which is down below him, starts flitting backward and forward and uh, causing a bit of a commotion, which obviously brings the others in. And that's my chance to um, sneak in. Now we're all looking at the fox for now, but here we go. Let's take the first one. And it goes, and then all hell breaks loose. As you can see just by the shadows. Uh, it all kicks off, but I think they're blaming the fox for it. Because they don't seem to be looking in my direction. He's still there somewhere, just looking for him. But targets are plenty now. They're all looking downwards. I need one to look at me, not the other way. And there's the next one. So I'm just waiting for him to turn around to face me. But they're all looking at the fox and blaming him. Not realising I'm behind him. Which gives me the perfect chance to uh, dip my bread. You can see they're all really concerned with the, the friends on the ground and the fox. I'm surprised the fox actually didn't, it didn't come over and take one of the dead ones. I thought it would, but it didn't. Perhaps best not with the lead pellet in its belly. There goes another. I'm just waiting for him to land and face me. They, they seem to want to land but don't want to. Oh, there we go. The next one. This is about the longest I've ever seen them uh, stay around while their friends are being shot beneath them. I've had a couple before, but I've never had this many in one go while they're still swarming round. And normally, once you've bagged a couple, they're all off. But I think it must have been the fox that was there that uh, distracted them. So those uh, power lines are absolutely perfect. So I've got in my hedge I've got a uh, I'm sat against a concrete wall but I've got a camouflage net behind me so they can't see me silhouetted and uh, it's about 30 yards away and it's just perfect I'm just looking around now waiting for one to try and land see if it will land I thought yeah I was about out of it now I couldn't imagine many more coming in just checking to see if the fox was still there. I didn't see him leave, so I think he's crouched down behind the uh, fence. Here comes one of the luckiest crows ever. I don't know whether I got him later on again, but not this guy. His mate next to him. Ten shot magazine. He was number 11. Have a quick brew. If anything will bring him in, it's me having a cup of tea.
It's gone really quiet for the last half an hour or so. So now the farmer's finished in the yard, I might move up to the other hide because he's put all the feed in the pens. So they'll probably start coming around up there now. It's only, uh, it's only nine o'clock, so it's been a bad couple of hours. Quite productive so far. Right, we're getting a bit more long, a bit more time here, and then we'll see how we go. Might move up there. Hung around for another sort of 45 minutes hour, and this one turned up after that. So I bagged him, had another cup of tea, and then went up to the hide. Took my jacket off, put my cap on, because it was really warm in the sun by then. As soon as I'd sat down, this guy turned up. He's 45 yards, so one mil dot. I don't mind shooting them from behind if I'm level with them, because I can take them through the shoulder blades, but not from below. I've just shifted position now um, into my little hide that I've had here for. It's been here for probably about. Uh, six or eight months probably. I think I built it in the summer last year. It works really well because obviously they're used to it now. The farmer's done his rounds now and filled all the sheds with uh, silage. So I've come up here, so it went really quiet down where I was and uh, just bagged one off the, <laughs> off the line. Um, I can use the steels, if, if you've seen the videos before, there's the red steel posts every five yards so I can use them to gauge distance because I know where the 30 yard one is and it's 35, 40 and 45 so I've just took one off the line at 45 um, so I'm sitting here for a bit it's been quite a productive day it's gone really quiet now actually um, we'll see how we do pick them off as they come in look at that magpie up there you can see it how close is that <laughs> Can't shoot them anymore though for the farm now. January the first. This one wandering along the muck heap. Just around 30 yards away. So quite straightforward on the cross here. Over he goes. That magpie just then. Um, there's no shooting magpies now for livestock, feedstuffs, and spreading diseases, which is what I'm here for. So magpies are off the menu from January the 1st. I do suggest that you uh, check out the general licenses if you haven't already because there's been some changes. Um, just be careful shooting magpies now because you can only take them for um, conserving endangered wild birds and livestock direct attack. Other than that you can't shoot them. This one here I just took me ages to spot him against that post Marcus, because I saw him land. There he goes, down he goes. Last but not least, a lesson on how not to do things. This guy's probably three or four yards at the most to my right. Thinks it's his birthday. He's in the feed trough, helping himself to everything. I'm not going to shoot him there because I don't want the pellet to go in the food. So I'm just waiting for him to come up. And he is literally three yards away. I ended up putting the scope on three times magnification. It's wound right down to its minimum ten yard focus. And I still can't get a decent picture on it. That's it. Three times magnification. A bit more of a wider angle. I'm just waiting for him to come up now. To say he's literally three, four yards away. I could have reached out and thumped him on top of the head with the silencer if it had been longer. Now I'm not going to shoot into the trough with a lead pellet. So he's going to have to wait and wait and wait. And he's dipping his bread in there. He's loving it. Just came out of nowhere and landed on the edge and then jumped in. Obviously completely oblivious to me. 
I'm thinking this one's in the bag, it's a certainty. Look at him lobbing everything around. Can't miss from this range, can I? Or can I? Oh, come on then. Jump out, sit on the edge, present yourself. There he is, nice big beak full. Up he goes. And uh, didn't hold over enough. So just took a few breast feathers off and away he went. So all that for nothing. That's how the day ended. If you enjoyed that, like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you soon. I promise it will be soon. Bye for now.